I spent a lot of my research career looking at different brain abnormalities, mostly schizophrenia, but also depression and addictions of different sorts. And then my colleagues started to do something different. They asked him to analyze a variety of brain scans. What he didn't know was that some of them were the brain scans of murderers. They brought me these scans and said, what do you think of these, what do you see? There were normals mixed in, people with schizophrenia, depression, and there were killers. But I didn't know the mix or who, you know, what. It was just like, here it is. But halfway through, I started to notice a pattern. It was fascinating. This one group, no matter what other damage they had or didn't have, they always had damage of the orbital cortex right above the eyes. The other part of the brain that looked like it wasn't working right was this front part of the temporal lobe, which houses the amygdala. And that is where your different animal drives are. I said, like, this is extraordinary. So I separate out the piles, and I said, this is a different group. And bingo, when we broke the code, there it was. That group were the killers. And I was, it, was, uh, it was really, you know, one of those aha moments. The areas that looked abnormal were crucial for controlling impulsivity and emotions. Fallon's images seemed to confirm what Hare's work had suggested. It looked like we were getting closer to the signature brain profile of the serial killer. This is about as dramatic as a difference can be in a PET scan is just a mind blower, really. The location of these abnormalities indicated to Jim why psychopaths could be driven towards extreme behavior. Just to get up to the point of being satisfied, to kind of feeding the amygdala, if you will, that whole system, some of these psychopaths has to do extraordinary things. You know, somebody like that may have to fly to Vegas and get drunk and be with a bunch of prostitutes or, or, or snort cocaine or kill somebody over and over and over again. It really indicated that there was a biological basis, a really hardcore brain basis, for this urge to kill. And then that brings the other question is, is that enough to cause somebody to be a psychopath or a killer? or other, other factors. So that aha moment was immediately followed by a bunch of question marks. <laughs>